civil society organization. Civil society organization has been referred to as a political association governing social conflict through imposition of rules that restrain citizens from harming one another in the classical period. The concept was used as a synonym for good society and seen as indistinguishable from the state. In fact, as I see it personally, the establishment of civil society was a big mistake. They say that civic society fulfills important duties of checks and balances in, demo in democracy. They are able to influence the government and hold it accountable. That is not true. Civic society set up in democracies we already have the check and balance in place. We have the elected government and the member of parliament who are elected by the people. Therefore, civic society is not a representative of the people because they are not elected by the people. This is the worst conflict of interest the world passed through for many years. You can't have a state within a state trying to dictate its own rules on a specific state. We already have civic society, just a trade union, elected by the people, the youth wings movement cooperatives movement representing the people. If you ask yourself, that is the question I keep asking myself ever since, who elected the civic society organizations? Who are their members? What is their constituencies in a particular state? We have civic society organizations such as Amnesty, Amnesty International, the International Trade Union Confederation, the Worldwide Fund for Nature, Greenpeace, and the Danish Refugee Councils. These are not elected representatives of the people through a democratic process. They are funded organization for a purpose and have nothing to do with running a state in which they operate. And if they turn out to become advisors of the state and the state decide to use their advice to improve their system, then it's fine. Then we don't have a problem with it. But if they turn to dictate or to organize people within a state in small groups, which they call it the civic society, then it is wrong. Then it is wrong. That is why today I said, let me try to talk about civic society. We had been seeing it year in, year out. When I was growing up, some of those civic societies 
we are in a different form of a non-government organization. These people had been operating for a very, very long time. If I go back to my youth, when I was in primary school, in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s, a lot of this non-government organization were already operating in Africa. And if you ask me, did we see changes today? The changes that they left behind? Nada. There is nothing. All these non-government organization and civil society, they're working for themselves. They're working for their employees and employers. If you look back and you ask yourself, some of those non-government organizations we see around the world, their boss in their headquarters is earning more money per year than the president or the prime minister of any country in Europe. Their director is earning more money, salaries, per year than what the prime minister here earns. Then you begin to ask yourself, what is going on? Why have we really established civil society and non-government organization who are collecting money on behalf of us, the poor people in Africa, for example? When you put on your TV, you'll be greeted with an advertisement that you have to give three dollars. It can save life in Africa. It can save a child in Africa. And I had been seeing that for the last 35 years. And what hurts is seeing the photos of those kids being put on the TV day in, day out. Any time you put on the television, you see that five euro can save a life in Africa, 10 euro can save a life in Africa, one pound can save a life in Africa, three pound can save a life of, in Africa. Then you get mad, you get frustrated, you get distressed. And then I keep asking myself, what the hell is happening? That is why I sat down and I said, I have to talk about the civic organizations and the non-government organization because they portrayed us here as beggars, and I get the feeling that when I walk around, people look at me as a beggar, 
Some may smile with me. Some may talk nicely with me. But you then keep asking yourself, why are they being so nice to me? Is it because they have in their hearts the feeling that, oh my God, that poor man, we should help them out. Turning myself into something that is nothing, that we are really living in problem, that we are very poor, which sometimes I don't agree with it. Because a man or a woman who has a lot at home, who can create his or her own food, cannot be poor. You can use that product of yours to help lift yourself up. But if I go back and I look at those advertisements, about Africa and the photos of those African children and poor people being put there day in, day in to collect money. The money they claim that is supposed to go and help the African people. And then when you go back to 1962, when we got independence, those non-government organizations were already there. The Pacific Society was an organization were already there in place. And then you look at it today, they are still playing the same game from 1962 to 2020 we have not seen any change this organization left behind for many years we are confronted with challenges in developing and performance of civic society organization we have seen its decrease in operation and failure to influence potential change. Lack of sustainable resources and weak governance that hinders their effectiveness. That is when you depend on donors because whatever you do, if the donors does not give you the fund, you cannot achieve whatever goal you have put forward. What we did not realize is that the civil society undermine the legitimacy and stability of a state. They create a situation where a state have to fight hard to service a divided society. The effect of that is that when you have a divided society's network, in that process, it weaken the effect of governance. We have an elected state with its structure in place. We have the members of parliament. We have a government that have structures in place, elected state. And then you have the civic society 
coming with its own structure, the local system structure that completely failed to understand each other way of operation. In that process, it reduces any source of its development effectiveness. It, does, it, it cannot be effective. It cannot be effective. You cannot have two states. In fact, saying a state within a state. The civic society comes with its own policy and operates within a state that has got its own policy. Does it make sense to you? To me, no. To me, no. I won't allow that to happen because it does not make sense. We all know that in order to fulfill political, social, and economic rights, we need to achieve effective and sustainable development. This cannot be successfully or successful when you have two ways players on the ground. With diverse ideology. Instead, it creates a situation of instability, conflict, and fragility. We cannot achieve any proper development when you have a semi-state operating within a state with emphasis on their own priorities and code of conduct. We can argue that in any state we have political elements or we have political element of political organization that can facilitate better awareness and a more informed and more informed people who and how to make a better voting choices, participate in politics and hold it government accountable. We have the executive, we have the parliament. We have the judiciary that participate in that process, a democratic process. We have it. We have them in places. If they cannot fulfill the goal and the purpose where they are sent to parliament to do, then the people who sent them to parliament have the right to recall them, have the right to say no, enough is enough. We are not going to allow it to happen. We are not going to accept it. So we are going to withdraw you, even if it takes five years. We have it in place. And then you begin to ask yourself, the civic society, what additional values a civic organization or a non-government organization have to offer apart from the donation they get in form of facilitations they bring into a state. I don't see a real link between civil society and democracy. 
civil society organization is not an elected group and not if an appointed by a group of citizens in any state why should they have political power to dictate what a state must do, act, or how a state must operate. I see them as players trying to create a welfare state within a state for their own interests and trying to have to become a political party that is not elected by the people. The state already have capabilities of budgeting, planning. Those who cannot control state transparency to guide the process or implementing the rule of law. Effective court rules. We have an effective court system. We have it. We have a court system that is effective. And then why? Why should we have all these organizations? Some of you may disagree with me. Some of you may agree with me. But I see civil society as a new movement that is engaged in advocating the public rights and wishes of the people, including but not limited to health, environment, and economic rights. It is not. It is a group of people who has their own ideology. A group of people who think that they can change people's mind and believe in what they believe in. When you come and you organize a group within a group, it means you divide people into small units. And that is exactly what we have happening now in Africa. You have these people who come and say, let's have the women into their own groups. And we call it the women group. And we tell them how things work in Europe or in America or in other parts of the world. Say this, you are right, you can also influence the policy. But we have a system in Africa whereby a woman can also stand and become a member of parliament. And that women group is already represented in the parliament through parliamentar parliament elections. If you look at how many women stood for election and elected. So we should not create another group, a women group, say, yeah, these people should have also a priority within the government. They should be elected apart on behalf of their women. <coughs> that is nonsense. Then they have created a small unit again Say, you see, because somebody is disabled, it should get a priority so that we can send them to the government. Then the government also played that game. She said, okay, if that is so, then I want a representative of the army also to be in the system. 
But then when you look at it, you say, you see, that is now a mistake that is being made because if you start dividing people into units and people divide themselves into units, it means you have created more problem than you can chew. And that problem is now beginning to work out in Africa because you see a lot of people are dependent on this organization because they go around the world, collect a lot of money on our behalf that we are very poor, we need to be helped. While their directors are handing more money here than any president or prime minister in Europe is handing. And then when they come there, they divide it into units. And that is why we now have the army representative. Tomorrow you'll hear the police will also say, yeah, but if you have the army representative in parliament with the police, we want to also have our representative in parliament. Then you hear the young girls they say, yeah, we are the youth. The youth should also have a representative in parliament. That's nonsense. The youth or the women group or what, they should not. If they want, they can stand for that parliamentarian seats. If they are elected, they can go to the parliament. You see, this is now what this non-government organization and civic society has left behind or they're trying to leave behind. When you cause maximum confusion and you divide people in units, then you get what you want. But if you ask yourself, let someone, I will challenge that person, come out since 1962 when this non-government organization were already functional in Africa to come out and tell me what they left behind that is very successful or the people they help with the money they collected they maintain that level of success and they're living a better life today no I don't think any of this organization, including the civic organization, will come out and challenge me that we have left this, this person we help, he became very wealthy and is helping another person. No. It's a business of you scratch my back and I scratch your back. We all know they have been scratching the back of those ministers of those presidents in developing countries year out, year in. They did it. They were scratching their back. Even today, as I speak, those non-government organizations, the civic society, they are working together with different players. Believe me, some of those organizations are also sitting on board of the World Bank International Funding for Environment. Check it out. They are there. They are working for these people. Some people will convince you and say, ah, a civic society organization is a group of people operating in the community and so-called non-government organization. In fact, I call it a social movement that was properly planned and is being used to distract the state attention, the people attention to what is really happening. And I believe that 
those organizations has to go back to a drawing table and try to find a more effective way of operation. If you live somewhere for three years, you make sure that the organization you are helping becomes self-reliant, that they don't depend on you for funding year in, year out for 35 years. It does not make sense. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to subscribe. I will be back.